In this video we're going to look at a quick black and white edit and then thinking outside the box we are going to use templates to create another black and white image. Let's dive right in. Okay, this is the first image I'm going to work on. I'm just going to show you the speed of the templates when you use them and how you can adjust them as well. So I'm going to jump straight into black and white and for this one I'm going to take Elegant Matte just to give that flattened crushed black feel to it. Next thing I am going to do is go into Edit and I am going to get into Light and I'm going to change the Smart Contrast slightly. I'll take it to about minus nine. Next thing, go into the portrait and I'm going to get into high key for this and for the high key I'm actually going to push the high key slightly not too much with this one but we'll take it to around about there 1920 for this and then I'm going to adjust the blacks for this one just to get a slightly different look and I'm going to take them right up to around about there so if I show you the before and after of this image before, after, before after a nice flat crushed black image here one more thing to do i'm going to jump into the local masking and i am going to add a basic mask to this and the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to pull back the saturation because this file still contains color information so i'm going to pull the saturation back to around about there and then i am going to adjust the shadows as well so i'm going to take them to around about there for this and for this image that's me done let's have a quick look at the before and after before and after so in that very short time we have changed the look and feel of this image As you know, Luminar AI, based on the content of your image, suggests certain templates for this. And in this case, you can see because it's a portrait image, it suggested the portrait templates for this. Easy portraits, it's the essence, analog. But for this one, what we're actually going to do is we're going to make this black and white, but we're going to play around with different templates first. So the first thing I am going to do is I am going to go in and choose black and white streets for this one. Again, black and white image, but you can see there is a slight contrast shift within this before, after, before, after. So you can see what's going on here. So you can use any of the templates depending on what, what the final effect is that you're wanting. From here, I'm going to get in and edit this and I'm going to get straight into the portrait mode. And the face light is okay, but let's just see what happens when I increase the face light. You can see it's, it's lit that up just ever so slightly and that might just be too much. I'll take it back to about 14. Yep, quite happy with that. The next thing I am going to do is I am going to get into the skin and I am going to push the skin to around there. Again, happy with that one as well. Quickly before, after, before, after. So you can see how just very quickly already we have changed the look and feel of this black and this image now. Next, I'm going to get back into the face AI and I'm going to add some iris flare. So we'll go in there and add some iris flare. Again, subtle, not too much for this. Then we're going to enhance the eyes even further and we're going to go quite far with this one. And that's just made them pop there. Uh, dark circles removal with hardly any, but we will adjust it slightly and improve the eyebrows. So let's go for that and that will just add more contrast into the eyebrows themselves. Next thing I am going to do is I'm going to go back into the essentials tab and go into vignette. And this time I'm going to create quite a strong vignette in this to around about there. And then I'm going to move the vignette so that we're drawn in because we've got quite, quite a lot of negative space here. I want to be drawn in even further to this image. So I'm going to choose the subject and I'm going to go around there. So you can see the vignette brings it down to wherever you want. That there is probably better for this. I may change it later. From here, get into the professional panel and I'm going to get into colour harmony. And what I'm going to do here is looking at the image, I want to adjust 
some of the colour information that's still there. I want to adjust that ever so slightly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to decrease the warmth and take it back to around about there. Again, subtle. Colour contrast, I'm not really going to touch. Uh, the warm, I am also going to pull that back as well, just to see what it does. I'll go to about there. I'll reset that one just to see. Yep, I'm going to pull that back. It's mainly affecting the background here. So now that we've got to this stage, we want to play around with the background of the image. So for this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get into the Sky AI. And straight away, I am just going to choose Blue Sky 4. And that's dropped in really well. So let's just play with a couple of anomalies around about the hair. Let's first of all move the position of it. So take out the horizon blending. And then move the position of the horizon. Let's zero that. So now we have added a background to this. A couple of anomalies within the hair and around the edges of the hair. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push the sky global to around about there. Yep, that's taken care of them for me. Quite again, very happy with what it's done there. I like the sharpness of this image as well. I also may increase that as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add more detail to the hair and also the eyes and the facial features. So I'm going to jump back into Essentials and I'm going to go to AI Enhance. And I'm going to push that tiny bit more. And you saw the hair pop there slightly. I'm going to get into the structure. Now that I'm in the structure, I'm going to push that as well. And that's brought out more detail here. It's a global edit, so it's affected the entire image. So I'm now going to choose the places where I want it to be applied to. So I'm going to paint in. I'll just increase the brush size here. And paint in the hair. Paint down there. There's not too much detail in there. Take the brush size down. Paint over the eyes. Take the brush size down even further. And create more structure within the lips and the mouth. And for me, I'm quite happy with that. A couple other things I want to do to this. I want to use atmosphere in this. I don't want to create a fog coming through, but because of the background and because of the model in it, what I want to do is use atmosphere to see what it does to the image. So I'm going to jump straight in here and go into atmosphere. So now that we're in Atmosphere AI, this is typically used for landscape scenes. So what you can do is we can actually apply it to this as well. If I apply it at 100%, that happens to the image. But I don't want to apply as much as that. I want to apply it so that it affects the hair slightly. Because you can see slightly more detail in here and down through the hair when it's applied. So it's just a creative use of this. So I'm going to take that back to around about there. And then what I'm going to do is remove it from the face and the skin. So I'll go in to the masks and I'm just going to erase it this time instead of painting in. So I'm just going to erase it there, down there, down here. And I'm going to leave it at that because she's got a white top on anyway. So you can see there what's happened with this image just by applying the fog. If I turn it on and off, you'll notice the difference. You may like the contrast. That's one thing that you may like within the image. For this one, I actually quite like what the fog has done to this and what the atmosphere has done to this. I may pull it back just ever so slightly to about there so that I can maintain some of the contrast in this image. Nearly done with this one, so what I'm going to do now is make a couple of tweaks to this image. And the first thing I'm going to do is go into the high key, and I'm going to push the high key in this, but not much at all. I'm just going to go to about there. That, again, I really like. I back into the face, and I'm just going to see what the face like is like when pushed slightly further. Yep, I like that as well. So what we did with this image, if we go for a before and after for this one, we had this full colour image of the model against a bright orange background. And then we actually used a city template to get the black and white for this one. After that, we added a background in. 
which took away entirely the plain background and provided us with this nice background to complement the model as well. I could have chosen any background at all, but that one complemented the model I felt the best. From there, we went in and added atmosphere to this. Now, the atmosphere was only added through this area here, but I don't know if you noticed that when we did the atmosphere, it also interacted with the vignette that we had applied and it softened off the vignette down here, left it still quite a bit up here, but softened it off down here and around here and back around here. So you can see the vignette has been left there. So with Luminar AI, it has all these different functions and you don't have to go through the standard templates to get the desired effect. I tried this image earlier with the portrait ones and I didn't like the effect it was. So I thought, oh, let's try it with another template and the black and white city one provided the final look that I was after. So remember and be creative with your choice of templates as well and play around with all different images. The speed is there within Luminar AI for you to create an image near enough like that. And that's a great thing as well. Also, if you want to spend your time you can go through everything and play around with it and also lets you see in the future I'll probably go back and use the black and white streets and as you can see down here it says black and white streets edited if I click here I can save this and name it as a new portrait edit for me and that will save everything that was done to this template so that's another handy feature as well it saves me jumping back in the template is there hopefully you enjoyed that video and hopefully it lets you see the different ways that you can utilize luminar ai to create the final image and this one as you saw we added a background to the plain orange background or once we turned it black and white to the plain gray background and then just to bring out some more atmosphere i'm going to use the word to bring out some more atmosphere in the image. We used Atmosphere AI to help lighten the hair and we removed it from the face. So it's worth playing around with the software just to see what you can do with it and, and what you can create to get the desired results at the end. As I said, I'm going to save that one so that next time I go into portraits, if I want the same effect, I now have that template there as a saved template. Before we go, I'd like to mention a live event that is happening on the 10th of December at 10 a.m., which is the Luminar Live event. And this is prior to the launch of Luminar AI. Photographers such as Elia Lacardi will be there, and it's going to be a sneak preview of the full software, to so say just before the launch of it. So, Hopefully you can tune in for that. And if you'd like to reserve a seat for that, I'm going to put a link down below so that you can do that. Remember, stay safe. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.